Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Current Affairs MCQs. Let's begin with the previous day question. Wallace line recently in the news is related to which of the following? A. It is an imaginary boundary separating the distinct faunal regions of Asia and Australia. B. It is a longitudinal line dividing the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. C. It is a geopolitical boundary between Europe and Asia. And D. It is a tectonic fault line in the Indian Ocean. The correct answer is option A. The Wallace line is an imaginary boundary separating the distinct faunal regions of Asia and Australia. It marks a major biogeographical division with stark species differences on either side of the line. It runs through the Makassar Strait, which lies between the east coast of Borneo and the western coast of Sulawesi. It extends between Bali and Lombok, separating the Sunda and the Sahul continental shelves. Hence, option A is the correct answer. Moving on to the first question, consider the following statements. Statement 1. Graphic processing units, GPUs, are critical for training and building large-scale artificial intelligence or AI models and are essential for advanced AI applications. Statement 2. The India AI mission aims to establish a robust AI computing infrastructure in India to support the development and testing of AI systems. Which of the following is correct in respect of the above statements? A. Both Statement 1 and Statement 2 are correct and Statement 2 is the correct explanation for Statement 1. B. Both Statement 1 and Statement 2 are correct and Statement 2 is not the correct explanation for Statement 1. C. Statement 1 is correct, but Statement 2 is incorrect. And D. Statement 1 is incorrect, but Statement 2 is correct. The correct answer is Option B. Graphic processing units or GPUs are critical for training and building large-scale artificial intelligence or AI models and are essential for advanced AI applications. Hence, Statement 1 is correct. The Indian AI mission aims to establish a robust AI computing infrastructure in India to support the development and testing of AI systems. Hence, Statement 2 is correct. The mission aims to enhance data quality and develop indigenous AI technologies. It focuses on attracting top talent, fostering industry collaboration, supporting impactful AI startups and promoting ethical AI practices. The Union Cabinet approved the Rs 10,372 crore India AI mission in March 2024 to establish a computing capacity of over 10,000 GPUs and develop foundational models with a capacity of more than 100 billion parameters trained on data sets covering major Indian languages for priority sectors like healthcare, agriculture and governance. Both Statement 1 and Statement 2 are correct and Statement 2 is not the correct explanation for Statement 1. Hence, Option B is the correct answer. Question 2. Consider the following statements. 1. Blockchain technology is a decentralized digital ledger that records transactions across a network of computers. 2. Blockchain is the foundation of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and has applications from supply chain management to decentralized finance, DeFi. Which of the following statements given above is are correct? Option A. 1 only. B. 2 only. C. Both 1 and 2. And D. Neither one nor two. The correct answer is option C. Blockchain technology is a decentralized digital ledger that records transactions across a network of computers. Hence, statement one is correct. Each block in the chain contains a number of transactions and every time a new transaction occurs on the blockchain, a record of that transaction is added to every participant's ledger. The decentralized nature of blockchain ensures that no single entity can alter or delete previous transactions, providing a high degree of security and transparency. Blockchain, originally the backbone of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, has evolved into a transformative technology powering diverse applications from supply chain management to decentralized finance. Hence, statement 2 is correct. Hence, option C is the correct answer. Moving on to the next question, regarding the National Board for Wildlife, Consider the following statements. 1. The National Board for Wildlife is a statutory board constituted officially in 2003 under the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. 
to the National Board for Wildlife is chaired by the Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and is responsible for the promotion of conservation and development of wildlife and forests. Three, the Standing Committee of National Board for Wildlife is chaired by the Chief Ministers of States on a rotational basis. How many of these statements given above is are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. And D. None. The correct answer is Option A. The National Board for Wildlife is a statutory board constituted officially in 2003 under the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Hence, Statement 1 is correct. The National Board for Wildlife is chaired by the Prime Minister and is responsible for the promotion of conservation and development of wildlife and forests. Hence, Statement 2 is not correct. The board is advisory in nature and can only advise the government on policy making for the conservation of wildlife. It serves as an apex body for the review of all wildlife-related matters and for the approval of projects in and around national parks and sanctuaries. The Standing Committee of NBWL or the National Board for Wildlife is chaired by the Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Hence, Statement 3 is not correct. Therefore, Option A is the correct answer. Moving on to the next question, consider the following statements. 1. The prohibition of simultaneous membership rules 1950 mandates an MLA resign from one assembly within 10 days if elected to multiple state legislative assemblies. 2. If a person is elected to two houses, a vacancy is created that must be filled by a by-election within six months under Section 151A of the Representation of People's Act 1951. Which of the statements given above is are not correct? A. One only. B. Two only. C. Both one and two. D. Neither one nor two. The correct answer is Option D. The Constitution and multiple laws allow a sitting legislator to contest for another office and retain one if victorious. Primarily, three scenarios arise in this context. A candidate cannot become a member of parliament under Article 101 1, with Section 69 of the Representation of People's Act 1951 mandating the vacation of one seat if won. Article 101 2 and the prohibition of simultaneous membership rules 1950 require a legislator to vacate a seat within 14 days of the election result if elected to another legislature. The prohibition of simultaneous membership rules 1950 mandates an MLA resign from one assembly within 10 days if elected to multiple state legislative assemblies. Hence, Statement 1 is correct. When a person is elected to two houses, it creates a vacancy that must be filled by a by-election under Section 151A of the Representation of People's Act 1951 within six months from the date of occurrence of the vacancy, necessitating frequent by-elections. Hence, Statement 2 is correct. Therefore, Option D is the correct answer. Question 5. Which of the following comes under the jurisdiction of Lokpal? 1. Judges of the Supreme Court and High Court. 2. Prime Minister. 3. Government Officials, Group A to D. Select the correct answer using the code given below. A. 2 and 3 only. B. 1 only. C. 2 only. D. 1, 2 and 3. The correct answer is Option A. Jurisdiction of Lokpal. Lokpal has jurisdiction over the Prime Minister with exceptions for matters of national security, international relations, etc., union ministers, MPs, and government officials, groups A to D. It also covers chairpersons, members, officers, or employees of entities established by an Act of Parliament, those partially or wholly funded or controlled by the central government, or organizations receiving foreign donations over Rs 10 lakh per year under the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act 2010. The Supreme Court recently ruled that all judges, whether in High Courts or the Supreme Court, are appointed under the Constitution, making them immune from Lokpal oversight. Supreme Court judges are appointed under the Article 124 and High Court judges under Article 217. Hence, Option A is the correct answer. Question 6. Consider the following statements. The Swadeshi movement had its roots in the anti-partition movement, which was started to oppose Lord Curzon's decision to divide the province of Bengal. 2. In the 1906 Calcutta session, 
the Indian National Congress led by Dada Bhai Navroji declared self-government or Swaraj as its goal. Which of the following statements given above is are not correct? A. One only B. Two only C. Both one and two and D. Neither one nor two The correct answer is option D. The Swadeshi movement had its roots in the anti-partition movement which was started to oppose Lord Curzon's decision to divide the province of Bengal. Hence, statement 1 is correct. The anti-partition campaign was launched by moderates to exert pressure on the government to prevent the unjust partition of Bengal from being implemented. The petitions were written to the government, public meetings were held, and the ideas were spread through newspapers such as Hitabdi, Sanjeevani and Bengali. The partition led to protest meetings in Bengal, under which the pledge to boycott foreign goods was first taken. In the 1906 Congress session held at Calcutta, the Indian National Congress, under the presidentship of Dada Bhai Navroji, declared self-government or Swaraj as the goal of Indian National Congress. Hence, statement 2 is correct. Hence, option D is the correct answer. Moving on to the next question. The One China policy often seen in the news is best described as A. The One China policy states that Taiwan is part of China and only the People's Republic of China represents the legitimate government of all of China. B. The People's Republic of China and the Republic of China share equal recognition as the legitimate government of China. C. Taiwan is an independent nation with no claims to China. D. The Republic of China has sovereignty all over China including Taiwan. The correct answer is option A. One China policy. It is the diplomatic acknowledgement of China's position that there is only one Chinese government. Under the policy, the US recognizes and has formal ties with China rather than the island of Taiwan, which China sees as a breakaway province to be unified with the mainland one day. The one China policy is a key cornerstone of Sino-US relations. It is also a fundamental bedrock of Chinese policymaking and diplomacy. However, it is distinct from the One China principle, whereby China insists Taiwan is an inalienable part of One China to be unified one day. The US policy is not an endorsement of Beijing's position and indeed as part of the policy, Washington maintains a robust unofficial relationship with Taiwan, external, including continued arms sale to the island, so that it can defend itself. Although Taiwan's government claims it is an independent country officially called the Republic of China, any country that wants diplomatic relations with mainland China must break official ties with Taipei. Hence, option A is the correct answer. Question A. Consider the following statements. Statement 1. Urban heat island is a local and temporary phenomena in which certain pockets within a city are experiencing higher heat load than its surrounding area. Statement 2. In urban areas, the rise of heat happens due to buildings and houses of cities made of concrete where the heat is trapped and not able to dissipate easily. Which of the following is correct in respect of the above statements? A. Both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct and statement 2 is the correct explanation for statement 1. B. Both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct and statement 2 is not the correct explanation for statement 1. C. Statement 1 is correct, but statement 2 is incorrect. And D. Statement 1 is incorrect, but statement 2 is correct. The correct answer is option A. Urban heat island is a local and temporary phenomenon in which certain pockets within a city experience a higher heat load than its surrounding area. Hence, statement 1 is correct. In urban areas, the rise of heat happens due to buildings and houses of cities made of concrete where the heat is trapped and not able to dissipate easily. Hence, statement 2 is correct. It has been observed that greener localities experience lower temperatures than non-green localities. Green vegetation, like plants, trees and forests, are prominent factors to regulate the incidences of the urban heat islands. Both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct, and statement 2 is the correct explanation for statement 1. Hence, option A is the correct answer. Moving on to question 9. With reference to Dholavira, a significant archaeological site, consider the following statements. 1. It is the fifth largest site of the Indus Valley Civilization and lies between two seasonal streams, Mansar and Manhar. 2. 
it was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2021. Which of the following statements given above is are correct? Your options are A, 1 only, B, 2 only, C, both 1 and 2, and D, neither 1 nor 2. And the correct answer is option C. Dholavira is located in Kutch, the arid island of Khadir, Gujarat, is a significant archaeological site inhabited from 3000 BCE to 1800 BCE. It was discovered by Jagatpati Joshi in 1968. It is the fifth largest site of the Indus Valley Civilization and lies between two seasonal streams, the Mansar and Manhar. Hence, statement 1 is correct. Archaeological findings include terracotta pottery, seals, ornaments and evidence of metallurgy. It was a trade hub for copper, jewellery and timber with inscriptions in Indus Valley scripts. No human remains have been found at this site. Dholavira features a walled city with a fortified castle, middle and lower towns, and a cemetery. Its advanced water system includes 16 reservoirs and step wells. It was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2021. Hence, statement 2 is correct. Hence, option C is the correct answer. Question 10. Consider the following statements. 1. India has the second largest textile manufacturing capacity globally. 2. India is the largest producer of jute in the world and second largest producer of man-made fibres or MMF. 3. In India, 100% foreign direct investment or FDI is allowed in the textile sector under the government route to attract foreign investments. How many of these statements given above is are correct? Options are A. Only 1 B. Only 2 C. All 3 and D. None The answer is option B. India's textile sector Position in global textile trade India has the second largest textile manufacturing capacity globally and ranks as the sixth largest exporter of textiles and apparels in 2023, accounting for 3.9% of global trade. Hence, statement 1 is correct. India is the second largest producer of cotton in the world, 23.83% of world cotton production, with production expected to reach 7.2 million tonnes by 2030. India is the largest producer of jute in the world and second largest producer of man-made fibres, including polyester, viscose, nylon and acrylic. Hence, statement 2 is correct. Market Growth Projections India's textile and apparel market is projected to reach US dollars 350 billion by 2030. 100% foreign direct investment allowed in the textile sector under the automatic route to attract foreign investments. Hence, statement 3 is not correct. Hence, option B is the correct answer. Now is time for practice question. Consider the following statements regarding Starlink. 1. Operated by SpaceX, it utilizes a network of approximately 7,000 satellites positioned in low Earth orbit, creating a mega constellation to provide connectivity across various regions of the world. 2. India has granted approval to Starlink for commercial operations, allowing it to compete with domestic telecom providers. 3. The Starlink satellites carry hall thrusters, which use electricity and krypton gas, to generate an impulse. Which of the following statements given above is are correct? Your options are A. Only 1 B. Only 2 C. All 3 and D. None Send us your answer in the comments section. Thanks for watching. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.